uh, Thanksgiving, then we had Christmas, and then I had a trip, and I've been sick, but now I am back. I'm so glad to see all of y'all. How are y'all doing? Doing good? All right. So, I have a question for you. You don't have to blur it all out. You can think about this just uh, in your head. What are some ways that you you thought of God? Like, what do you think he's like? What do you think he's like? Just think about that for a second. And I'll give you some examples here. So, let's see. Where do we go? Uh, okay. So, has, has anyone ever thought about God being like a vending machine? You walk up and you want something and you press the button, you put in the right code, you say the right prayer, and BAM! You get what you want. Anybody ever thought about the vending machine? Just some way to get what you want? I've kind of thought about that. There's things that I want, and I just go, and I pray, and I think, I don't know, he's going to give me what I want. It's, it's a lot like a vending machine, right? So, someone may think of him like an old grandfather. All right, so the grandfather, when you think about this, he's old. He really doesn't know what's going on in your life. He's always been around, though, right? And you know you should go visit him, so you pray every once in a while. You go visit your grandfather every once in a while. Anybody ever thought of that old grandfather? Yeah. 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 Kind of go to the caring old guy, you know, he's always there. Not not really knowing what's going on, but I go over there every once in a while and tell him what's going on in my life and just see how he's doing. Kind of connect with him. So some people think of him in that sense. I bet a lot of you have thought about him in this way. How about like a dog? Yeah. <laughs> like a judge yeah. or like a cop or or like an attorney, you know, and he's always there lurking yeah, around the really? corner, and he is going to be waiting on you to mess up, right? And you're always worried about messing up. And then he's going to get you, put you in jail, right? So has anybody ever thought of him as like a judge in that way? No. No? I like to think of him more as like a grandfather, like a loving old man that's, you know, in my life. So I think that if we were to go to a mall, and ask people just random people, you would get those three answers, but also a lot of other answers, right? There's a lot of things that y'all have thought of that I haven't thought of as far as like my theory compared to yours. So um, when we think about the different ways, it kind of brings me to thinking, what is God really like? Do we really know what he's like? Think about that for a second. Can you really know what God is like? That's a big question, right? So when we have big questions, where do we go, kids? The Bible. The Bible. All right, yes, good, good, good. All right, so we're going to go to the Bible, and we're going to go to the New Testament. We're going to go to the Gospels. <laughs> what are the Gospels about? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John tell the story of who? Jesus. Jesus, correct. Good job. All right, so we're going to go to those, but we're actually going to go a little bit before Jesus was born. You know, in Mary, there's an angel that visits Mary, right? And they and he told Mary that she was going to give birth to someone. But there was also another visit that the angel did before the visit to Mary. Does anybody remember that story? Remember that angel visited someone and said that there would be another birth before Jesus. Yes, yes, Zacharias and Elizabeth. And so who was the baby that would come from Zacharias and Elizabeth? Did anybody remember that? John the Baptist, correct. Okay, so we've got that part of the story down. So this is where we're really getting into some deep, trying to figure out who he is. So an angel visited Zacharias and Elizabeth and told them that they would be having a child. And so this child became John the Baptist. Now, Baptist wasn't his last name, right? That'd be kind of weird. Like, hey, Mr. Baptist, what's up? How you doing? No, that's just what we find him doing when we start reading about him in the Bible. He is at the Jordan River. He is baptizing people. So, he was a, he was dressed strangely. He was one of those really weird people. Probably got like green shoes, loose pants, pink shirt. Wrinkle, just rolled out of bed, didn't iron anything, got washed or whatever. His hair was like Carson's, you 
I'm telling you, it really is. It takes like an hour for that, right? All right, so we call him John the Baptist because that's what he's doing when we find him in the story. He's at the Jordan River and he's baptizing people. So he's dressed strangely. There's people who are coming from everywhere, literally everywhere, coming there to be baptized by him. So the religious leaders at that time, does anybody know the, the word for religious leaders? Pharisees. Pharisees. So the Pharisees was like, what's up with this guy? Why is everybody coming to see him? Who is he? So they were really worried about anybody who got a lot of attention. They wanted to know who this person was and why they were getting all this attention. So they traveled to go find him to find out what was going on. So they went to go investigate him. And so we're going to look here at John 1, 26, 27. Would anybody like to read this for me? I baptize people with water, John replied, but one is standing among you whom you do not know. All right, so they come to him and they're like, so what's your deal? Who are you and why are you here? Why are you so important? And so John, so John the Baptist is saying um, that someone's coming and that it's really not about him. It's not about John the Baptist. It's about the one that he is preparing the hearts of people for. So John is telling them that there's someone coming. He's baptizing people, getting them prepared and ready for the coming of the one that is on the way. So he talks about this person as if they're a real deal, and the one that they're waiting for. Does anybody know who that one that they're waiting for is? Jesus, Jesus right? Yeah. So, and right about that time in this story, just like it is with God and Jesus, it's always on time. He walks right up on the scene. So think about this. John the Baptist, you know, the angel had said he was going to be coming, and that Jesus prepared the hearts of the people for the one that would come. He's in the Jordan River. He is baptizing people. And coming over the ledge, over the hill, is Jesus. And he knows it. He already knows who Jesus is. He's already been preparing people. He's already been waiting for them. So it was about that time that Jesus actually came out to John at the Jordan River to be baptized. And when Jesus came out of the water, something happened. So let's look at 16, 17 to find out what that was. But he's about to read this one for me. Anyone? Yes, please. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he came up out of the water at the moment as it was open. He saw the Spirit of God coming down on him like a dove. Wow. Okay, so he knew that Jesus was coming. He was preparing. But still, do you think that maybe he had just a little bit of doubt? Like, I'm going to do this. I believe this is what I'm doing right. So he baptizes Jesus, and the heavens open. And God confirms that this is the one. I think I would have passed out. If that would have happened, if the heavens would have opened, and this big voice would have came and said, This is my son. You know, I, I think I would have passed out. I was a little bit more scared than most people. So. John was there when God himself confirmed that Jesus was the chosen one sent by God. So sometime later, John was with his own disciples, and Jesus came walking by. So we're going to read on um, 35, 36. Who would like to read this verse right now? Carson? The next day, John was again appearing with the disciples. All right, so uh, Peter, read that one. That was God. I mean, he is the son of God. Isn't that what God kind of confirmed when he opened up the heavens? Okay, so who might have come back, back to that one? That's a little strange. But John was there with his two disciples, his followers. John saw Jesus and pointed out to him. And what do you think the reaction of the disciples were? So they've been following John already. Kind of like Jesus' disciples. They were following John when he was baptizing people at the river. What do you think their reaction was when he said that that's the name of God? Let's find out. We'll look at verse 37. Who would like to read this one for me? Yes, Tanya. The two disciples did so. So they followed Jesus. What? Okay, so he had been working hard. He had been living in the desert. He was baptizing people. He knew Jesus was coming. He had his disciples. They've been with him forever. They were 
like Rose. It was like a team. They were working together. And as soon as this got locked up on the scene, they leave John and go follow Jesus. What do you think John was feeling? What? Like, would you be a little bit jealous? I mean, we were a team. We were working together, right? So why do you think we need to follow this guy? So at that same time, Andrew, one of his followers, had spent the day with Jesus. So not only did he lost these people, Andrew leaves after spending the day with Jesus. He goes home, and he finds his mother telling him that they have found the Messiah, and he went to follow him too. So now, he's even with those people that weren't his disciples. All these people are now following Jesus. When they were disciples and following John and trying to find the story of what was to come. You think John might have been a little defensive or, or territorial even. Um, instead, he used the picture of a wedding to explain what happened. A wedding? Okay, let's check this out. Alright, so 28 and 29. Let's read these verses. Who would like to do that? Go ahead, babe. So he's comparing it to a wedding. Let's uh, see the time. Okay. So he's basically saying, I'm not the Messiah. I'll sit ahead of him. The bride belongs to the groom. Okay. So if these people were following Jesus, then you can consider Jesus as like a groom, right? You said Jesus is like a groom, and the followers of the people that are going to help. So that would be like a disciple. Okay. I can see where it kind of makes sense. So at a wedding, the stars are the bride and the groom. Everybody is there because of him. John said that Jesus is like the groom, and John was like the groom's friend there to help him. Okay, so maybe he was like his groomsman. He was preparing the way, he was taking care of everything to come before Jesus got there. Oh, all right, I can see where that makes sense. So when the groom shows up, the friend is so happy and full of joy because of all that means is that the wedding is about to happen. So when Jesus walked on the scene, John was super happy, kind of like the groomsman would be. Because he knew that the plan was about to get started. What he had been preparing for all this time was about to start happening. And John said it was the same when Jesus said come. And then John says something pretty powerful here. Let's read uh, John 3.30. Who would like to read John? Okay, so to say that out loud, that's kind of difficult. You're losing all your friends. They're leaving you and following Jesus. And now he says out loud, he must become more important. And I must become less important. Why do you think that is? Yeah, he's the son of God. And John knows how significant this man is. He's like, look, I'll step back. I'll get in the, in the shadow. I'll be the groomsman. And I'll just take care of you. I'll prepare the way. I'll do whatever it takes to help you on this journey because I know who you are and what you are. So that brings us back to this, this point. How do we know what God is like? So who better reflects God than anybody else? Jesus. Why is that? He's the son of God, correct. So, if we really want to know what God is like, we can take a look at Jesus, right? We can take a look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We can see how he lived his life. So, if you want to know what the Father, the uh, Father is like, you can just take a look at Jesus. Jesus is our starting point. So, like I said, if you go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you look at how he lived his life. So if you want to know if God is merciful, was Jesus merciful? In his life, did he show mercy on people? Was he healing people? Helping people? Even those people that we would normally walk away from. Jesus never walked away from those people. He touched them. He was concerned. So if you want to know if Jesus is um, was he bothered, or is God bothered by injustice? Does, does 
God get mad about injustice? Did Jesus get mad? Mm -hmm. I thought he put the table one time, right? What? Yeah. Jesus got upset with injustice, and so does God. So anything that Jesus reflected in his life is reflecting God. And that's how we know who God is. It's by looking at Jesus' life and looking how he lived his life. But I want to return to one other thing. And maybe you noticed it. I don't know what it's about. It can be a little strange. I mentioned it earlier that I was like, hmm, I'm not so sure about that. So that day when John was there with his two disciples and he saw Jesus walk by, he didn't say, look, it's Jesus. What did he say? Son of God. What? Like, how does that even make sense? In the name of God, uh, he's Jesus. Okay, so John was saying something pretty powerful here. You might remember... Last week we talked about how Jesus' family went back to Jerusalem every year to celebrate what? The Passover. Correct, the Passover feast. And it was celebrated, it was a very important event in the history of God's people. God's people were in captivity in where? Oh man, y'all are killing it. It is the 8 o'clock service. This is first service for kids are on fire. All right, God calls Pharaoh to let them go by bringing the plague of death to each household. So does anybody remember that when the angel of death came at this time, they had the blood of the lamb on their doors. Can you see the relation in that? He's the lamb of God, which means that his blood is what will save them. Same way with that, that blood that was on the door. The blood of the lamb was what saved that family from the angel of death. And now the blood of the Son of God will be what saves us. He is the Lamb of God. So he is the sacrifice and the ultimate sacrifice of God. So today as we go out to our small groups, I want you to really think deeply about things that you have read about Jesus, things that you know about Jesus, the stories that we've been covering in Jesus' life, and the birth of his life, and all those things. And think about how you can correlate or compare that. Correlate is a good word for a small group, but yeah, I'll repeat it. Don't ever say it. But that gives you a way to compare Jesus to God so that you can know exactly who God is. Does that make sense? All right, so when we break up the small group, let's, let's spend a little bit more time doing that. Right now we have worship, correct? Who's doing worship? <gasps> All right. I want you to stand, give a good welcome to Will, and we are going to worship.